Exercise 6. How Crossword Puzzles Are Created Shirley and Chris are on the train. Listen to their conversation and fill in the missing information in the notes below. Chris, do you have the time? Yes, it's 4.15 now. How long does it take us to get to Edinburgh? I see there is still an hour to go. We will get there at 5.20. I see. What shall we do to kill the time? Shall we play a crossword puzzle? Okay. That's a good idea. Oh, Chris. Yes? Do you know who invented the crossword puzzle and how crossword puzzles are created? Well, the crossword puzzle was introduced in the Sunday supplement of the New York World newspaper in 1913. It was designed by Arthur Wynne. Mr. Wynne was inspired by Magic Square, a children's word game in which words are arranged vertically and horizontally. Wayne added empty squares and some clues. So that the player can deduce the words according to the clues. Yes. By the early 1920s, Crossword puzzles were standard features of almost every American newspaper. Yes, according to a report, many crossword puzzle books have been published since then. In 1924, four crossword puzzle books were on the bestseller lists. Booksellers also experienced phenomenal sales of another type of book, dictionaries. Today, Crossword puzzle makers each have their own techniques to challenge the skills of their players. Right. I know Eugene Waleska is a creator of the New York Times crossword puzzle. He begins with a theme and lists as many words as he can think of that loosely fit the theme. Yes. Birds, for example, might prompt pigeon toad, goose step, and turkey trot. Then Waleska starts to fill in the grid with the long words first, avoiding words ending in J or beginning with X. He works first in the lower right corner of the grid, since it is harder to find a word that ends with a certain letter. Waleska says that when he started in this business, it took him several days to fit the words into a 15 by 15 square grid. Now it takes less than an hour. Let's play it and see how well we do. Exercise 14. The Dean's Speech. Listen to the talk. Circle the correct letters for questions 1 to 5 and for questions 6 to 8 Indicate whether the statements are true or false by writing T for true and F for false. Good morning, students. As many of you have already heard, tuition fees will be going up to $3,600 per term, starting in September 2001. I felt I should explain to you why the fees are increasing. The primary reason is, of course, that expenses have increased, including faculties and staff salaries. Our operating expenses have also increased in the past year. As we try to maintain a high level of service to our international students, we have added new staff in the last year to meet the growing needs including a manager of admissions. We have also expanded our homestay staff to improve our homestay services. Unfortunately, when expenses increase, the costs have to be passed on to the student. This is the first increase in fees since 1998, however, and we are trying to keep the fees as reasonable as possible. To compare our fees with other institutions in the province, the University College of the Caribou is raising its fees 
to $3,800 per semester starting in September 2001. Programs at UBC start at $13,830 per year. At many institutions, the tuition fees for academic courses in the third and fourth year level are higher than those for the first two years are because the costs to run the courses are higher. We have decided not to differentiate the fees, but to balance the costs by charging the same tuition for all four years. I would like to tell you that we value your opinion and want to make sure that you are satisfied as a student at the college. If any of you would like to meet with me to discuss the fees or any other matter, you are welcome to visit me in my office in Building 359. Please phone 741-2795 for an appointment.